Hello, my name's Trevor Brown, and we'll get to the reason for this video a bit later on, but I thought it'd be important just to show some of my background and talk about where I've come from, um, just to show you that I've actually moved forward like I never before thought I would. So, so here it is. And the last decade has been probably the most interesting decade I've had in my life. I'm currently 48, and exactly 10 years ago, I was actually homeless. I was living in a little van, I was camped out bush, uh, battling against demons in my head, I was, you know, really struggling. And I can tell you at that point, looking forward, I never thought I'd be doing some of the things I do, do now. And it's been very exciting, I get to do some great stuff. I came down to Melbourne at the start of 2009, just in time for Black Saturday. I was parked out at Diamond Creek, so I was close. And I knew nobody basically in Melbourne. I do have some family here, but... For, for a whole heap of reasons, I, they don't, I can't talk to them. I have no, no connection to them or no, no engagement with them at all. Um, so I come to Melbourne, I knew no one, and I very quickly got to make some new friends. I also got to explore who and what I really am, and it turns out I'm creative. For many, many years I thought I was broken. I just didn't look at the world the same way that other people did, and now I'm, I can appreciate that I'm just creative. Um, I ended up doing five and a half years living in my little van. And for most of the time I was on the streets of Melbourne. Did do some traveling. It wasn't all bad. I went over to uh, went over to South Australia. Went up driving up through New South Wales, up to Queensland. But for the most part, I was on the streets of Melbourne. And it was very, very difficult. And I um, did some had some really tough things go on. I... I had bottles and rocks thrown at my van a few times. I had a Molotov cocktail one night. I continually got harassed by the law enforcement and to a lesser extent, the police, who I think see the bigger picture, but still you know, knocking the, having them knock on the door at two o'clock in the morning was pretty tough. Um, from early 2008 to mid 2013, I was actually homeless. And I can tell you during those years, I never thought I'd be doing something like this with this sort of equipment, um, you know, a green screen. I never thought I'd do anything like this. And some of the things I've done over the last few years just were never on my mind back then. At the start of 2013, I decided I'd, I'd had enough of trying to get work and no one wanted to employ me. So I decided to, while I was still homeless, I decided to go back into school and do my VCE course because I'd never completed year 12. And from the start, it turned out I was a far better student in my 40s than I ever was as a kid. And that was interesting. And at the end of the year, I got my VC certificate and that was basically all I was gonna do. I was just gonna do that and that was it. A Couple of interesting things happened. I was published in 2013. I had a couple of articles in the Big Issue magazine uh, and that was exciting. And then in the middle of 2013, I was actually slotted into this house. I'd helped a friend move in and then she asked me to move her somewhere else. And I was like, what are you doing? And then and then she said, why don't you take my old room? Which I did. And since moving in here, I've been able to use this as a base of operation. It's somewhere for me to relax, chill out, even like on a day like today, I can um, do something like this and just be relaxed in it. It's, it's awesome. At the end of 2013, or actually the start of 2014, as I said, I only went back to do my year 12, but I actually got different offers from, from universities all around Melbourne. Um, and I didn't really have any plans to go to university. I, I sort of thought, you know, maybe. But it got to a point where I started looking at different things and one of them caught my eye and that was a Bachelor of Creative Arts degree at Victoria University. And I remember rolling up and I had the offer on my phone. I said to the girl at the office, I said, what do I do with this? <laughs> and um, it was funny because she said, this is at the start, very start of 2014, she said, look, um, if you fill this form out, you can defer for 12 months. If you fill this form out, you can defer for six months. Or if you fill this form out, you start right away. And by the way, you've got a class starting in an hour. Um, I was like, no, 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 I'm not, wasn't ready to, to start straight away. So I took the year off. I did some exciting things in 2014. Helped get the uh, pool team up and running at uh, Osnum Community Centre, which was an important part of where I was when I was homeless, I used to go in there and and do my laundry and have showers and meet up with friends and get some professional support. An awesome place. It's interesting, they're about to be on the move very shortly, but um, 
still as recently and only a week ago I was there so it's, it's a place that's still still close to my heart but then in 2015 I actually rolled up at Vic Uni and I started my Bachelor of Creative Arts degree and it was great and exciting did some awesome classes but then it's interesting because at that same year towards the end of 2015 I had another situation where a class a single class actually turned me in another direction and it was very exciting for a class called Digital Sound and Video I had to produce a small production and I actually produced a, a small production about some of the homeless services here on the streets of Melbourne that provide support to those that are doing it really tough. Did some interviews, um, organised some things and it was really exciting and all too quickly that was over and the, it sort of sparked something in me which was, which was weird. I thought damn that was a lot of fun. And then right at that point, one of the teachers at university, he was actually the, one of the coordinators, he'd been throwing us this idea of a brand new Bachelor of Screen Media degree, and he said I should jump across to that, so that's what I did. So from 2016, I've been studying a Bachelor of Screen Media degree, doing some amazing stuff, working with awesome technology, software. I don't want to be in the IT world, but I do like some of the software, although I must say editing's not really what I want to do, but it, is, it has its fun moments. Like when you start with something and you tweak it and tweak it and you end up with a really good pot, you know, thing at the end that's a glimpse of what you started with and you've been able to add things to it. I like that. I also did writing the documentary and in that class I produced this little uh, doco uh, about the condition that I've got, which is alopecia. So that's why I haven't got any hair. And that was a bit of fun. Um, also done motion graphics and a bit of cross media practice and things like that and looking at different platforms and where all video is going these days um, which was which is pretty cool we get to last year and we get some big big classes running there we've got screen media enterprise which which was exciting i did a bit of post-production i had some issues with post-production and i actually come back and did it again this year and it was far better this year run by the coordinator um, it was interesting um a total different you know, two different teachers, two different slants on it, and I did far better this time around, so that was cool. Uh, I also did a subject called Studio Project One, and we had to plan a project, and I planned a fairly ambitious project. Uh, I wanted to do a short production, and it's actually called The Monochrome Survivor. There's a Facebook page for it, maybe my 2020 project. We'll see what happens. Um, it's an interesting script, and we'll see how that goes. But because we didn't get funding for this, so that failed, we needed about 15 grand. It was pretty ambitious, like I said. Um, I then had to quickly turn around and do come up with something else for Studio Project 2. So we And then we get to, to this year, and I was meant to finish at the end of last year, but for a few different circumstances, one, they cancelled one of my main classes, and a few other things. So I come back, I did post-production again, like I said, did better, passed. We also did mobile user experience, which was interesting, it was about chat, chat bots and, and things like that. Um, but the big class I wanted to do was visual effects. and.
Well, I think I can come up pretty flash for corporate events. Uh, I've done a couple of these. And if you've got something really serious, well, this is about as good as I get. Some of the events and that I've done, I have to wear my suit. <laughs> I don't like wearing it, to be honest. I've been lucky enough to purchase some of my equipment through some professional development grants that I was able to access. But unfortunately, as you can see, the only wheels I've got in the driveway is my trailer. It's a bit hard to drive around. So I have to carry all this equipment and I've got a few other items as well that I just can't carry. I have to carry what I can on my, my, trailer, uh, my trolley, but uh, that can be difficult. And sometimes I have to jump into taxis, so I've got to pack everything up and that can cost me a bit. Whereas if I had my own vehicle, I'd probably only need maybe, you know, maybe $10, $15 worth of fuel to get to most of the places I'd need to get to. So it'd be more efficient for me. As you can see from this video, I've worked hard. I've got awesome results at, at uni and I've certainly learned a lot over the last three and a half years. And I'm ready to apply my skills and knowledge to video projects. I've already started to get a little bit of corporate work, just a, a bit here and there. And I haven't quite finished my degree. I'd also like to mention that I've, the only thing I've got to do for my degree is actually do 100 hours internship somewhere. And having a vehicle to get around to wherever I have to do that might be a, a thing as well. But ultimately the biggest thing holding me back, as I just mentioned, is that I need a vehicle. I can't continue to carry all this gear on my little trolley. It's getting difficult. This is my main camera bag where I put my cameras. I put spare batteries lights, cables, tools, chargers, all that sort of gear. The bag's virtually waterproof, it's got foam in it, certainly looks after the equipment. This is my audio kit, which has got a range of microphones, a Zoom H6 recorder, I've got a Rode Blimp in there, another NTG 4 Plus microphone, really high quality kit. And I've got some associated gear like the green screen that could be used on site somewhere. So I know I'm asking a lot. I've been looking at RAV4s as, a, as an option. I took one for a test drive recently, this sort of thing. Uh, looking at early 2000 models, so I'm not after the 2018 model. I'm just after something that'll get me around. I come from a mechanical background, so I can fix little things that go wrong. Um, but I need to have something better than just my trailer in the driveway. I'm already knocking back work because I can't get to it, which is frustrating and, and hurts a little bit. And, and I really want to continue doing this work. This is the stuff that I've, I've studied for. I'm really excited about it. I love it. This is what I want to do. Um, the clients that I'm working with seem to be very happy with what I produce. And I'd like to get more and more uh, clients, obviously, and, and get more income. Ultimately, I'd like just like to, you know, I just want to work, get the money and like everybody else but it's hard when you can't get around to the jobs. The other thing that's on my mind is that in about eight months time, we more than likely have to move out of this place. And the idea of finding a place, moving all my gear and relocating is a damn sight easier if I had my own vehicle. So, so there's three reasons. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for watching this video and appreciate any support you can give me. I'm ready to I'll, I'm happy to trade off dollars investment for work and and you can certainly check out the type of work I've done by looking at my YouTube. Here's a selection of what I think are five videos that I've put up on my YouTube channel that really showcase what I can do. Obviously the top one is my most recent uh, small trailer that you've just seen but there's some other stuff in there. There's a shot in the White Knight special that's probably the best bit of um, steady cam work that I've ever done. And there's some other stuff. I've also done a lot of interviews. I've got really good gear for interviews. I've got a wireless mic kit. I've got the boom mic, things like that. I've got all sorts of really good kit and I just want to use it. I didn't buy it so it sits on the shelf and doesn't get used. I want to get it out and about and having a vehicle would certainly help. So I'm looking for seven grand. I know it's a lot. Basically the breakdown of that is I want to spend up to five grand on a vehicle. What I'm looking at is in the three and a half, four, four and a half grand bracket. 
And then I need to have a couple of green left over because day one I need this thing to be on the road. So I want to be able to do rego and insurance, put a tank full, full of juice in, and I want to be able to maybe put some new seat covers on or something like that if it needs it. So I really need this thing to work and 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 then I'll be on then I'll be up and running. So again, thanks for watching and I appreciate any help you can provide. Cheers.